has won 10 to help lead his club to a commanding 13-game lead in the National League East. Houston entered the National League in 1962. The old Colt 45s played in an outdoor stadium that was hot and sultry and mosquito-laden. But then the Astros moved in here to, at that time, what they called the eighth wonder of the world, the Astrodome. We take it so much for granted now as domed stadiums dot the landscape coast to coast, but it's worth remembering this was the first of the indoor ballparks. And tonight it hosts the 57th All-Star Game. I'm Al Michaels. Welcome to Houston. And if history tells us anything, it should be a low-scoring game. This is a pitcher's park, tough to hit home runs in. And the only other All-Star game played here was in 1968. It was the only one nothing All-Star game in history. And wouldn't you know it, the only run of the game came across the plate when Willie McCovey grounded into a double play. More of the same tonight? Well, we'll see. We've got some good pitchers on both sides. But it's also worth noting, I think, most of all tonight, that each All-Star game marks sort of a passing of the torch. This one in particular. Here it is, 1986, and think about some of the active players. Pete Rose is not here tonight. Reggie Jackson is not here. Steve Garvey is home. Nolan Ryan, who pitches his home games in this ballpark, is not here tonight. And then there are the four 300-game active winners. Steve Carlton of the Giants, Phil Necro of Cleveland, Don Sutton, who won his 300th earlier this season for California, and Tom Seaver of Boston. And those eight men who just about have their tickets written to Cooperstown are all in the television audience. So nostalgia takes a backseat tonight. Amongst the new guard, perhaps best typifying some of those new stars, now not only on the horizon but having arrived, are the two starting pitchers. Roger Clemens, who earlier this season struck out 20, won his first 14, and comes in with a mark of 15 and 2, and comes back home in a way. He went to high school in Houston. He'll be on the mound against Dwight Gooden. Here are the feelings of tonight's starting pitchers. It's going to be exciting. All the home, everybody at home, you know, mother and uh, all my family is going to be coming in and and uh, getting to see it. And it's going to be a little extra pressure because the the family's there and it is in front of my hometown and all the coaches I played for and, and all that bit. So it's uh, it'll be exciting and uh, it'll be probably three. Uh, if I pitch three innings, it'll be three pressure-packed innings for me. Well, it was a great feeling you know, to have the honor to start an All-Star game, not only to make it but be the starting pitcher. And um, it's a great honor, you know, facing the Merkley's League's best hitters. You know, in one game mid-season and um, something you can look back on, you know, when you're out of the game or down in your career. Each of those men will work the maximum three innings, perhaps less, but what about the rest of the rotation? Let's get some insight. The American League manager is Dick Hauser of the Royals, and he's with Jim Palmer. Thank you, Al. I am with Dick Hauser in front of the third base dugout. Dick, we know Roger Clemens is starting the game. What's the rotation after that? Well, it's going to be Clemens, it's going to be Higuera, and then it's going to be the knuckleballer, Huff. Then we're going to do what we have to do to win it. We're going to try to get a lead, hold on, use our big bats off the bench and play some defense late. Now, Roger Clemens pitched Saturday night. He's coming back with only two days rest. You're certainly aware of that. Is I, that going to change your No, rotation? not at all. I knew he was going to pitch on Saturday. We talked about this a month ago. I knew he could pitch Saturday. He'd be well rested. He lives 30 miles from here. I feel good about him pitching. Okay, another thing. Uh, when you, you have a 20, you have a 28-man roster. I know you'd like to play everybody, but what's more important, getting everybody in the game? Well, it's way. a little bit of both. I tell you the truth, I'd like to play everybody, but I'd also like to win the thing, too, so I think winning's going to be first. Well, best of luck tonight. Let's go over to Tim McCarver with the National League manager, Whitey Herzog. All right, Jim, and of course, Dwight Gooden starting. Whitey, two questions. How long are you going to go with Dwight Gooden? Secondly, who are you going to counter with after Dwight? Well, actually, I want him to go three innings, but if he labors and has a couple of tough innings, I would get him out after two. After Dwight, I figure I'm going with Fernando Valenzuela. Although, after uh, Fernando, if I had to get Dwight out of there in the third inning, I would use one of the relief pitchers and then start the inning with Fernando. And after Fernando, you don't know? I'm looking at Fernandez, and I'm looking at Scott. If I, I'm going to look at the lineup, see where we're at, how many left-handers or right-handers they come up and go that direction. It sure should be a lot of fun. Now let's go back to the booth to Al Michaels. And Tim, the National League, hopeful the fun will continue because, as most of you know, the National League has dominated. They've won 13 of the last 14 and, unbelievably, 21 of the last 23 All-Star games. And we'll meet both squads when we come back to the Astrodome in Houston. 
1986 All-Star Game. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Honda Scooters. Wasn't it fun? And by Michelin. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. Hate to drive in the rain. No one's got the power. And the crowd still filing into the Astrodome. Capacity up near 45,000. Sold out the second time this Midsummer Baseball Classic has been played in the Astrodome and the fourth time overall indoors. 1979, it was played in the Kingdome in Seattle and then last year at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Right now, let's meet the teams. The PA announcer is Fred Duckett. Batty practice staff from the Kansas City Royals. Number 41, Mike Ferraro. Number 43, Gary Blaylock. Number 44, Jim Schaefer. The trainers from the New York Yankee, Gene Monahan. The Texas Rangers, Bill Ziegler. The coaches from the Cleveland Indians, number seven, Pat Corrales. The Boston Red Sox, number one, John McNamara. The players. The Baltimore Orioles, number 20, number 33, infielder, Eddie Murray. Number 41, pitcher, Don Ossie. The Boston Red Sox, number 10, catcher, Rich Gedman. Number 14, outfielder, Jim Rice. From the California Angels, number 39, pitcher, Mike Witt. From the Chicago White Sox, number 3, Outfielder, Harold Bain. From the Cleveland Indians, number 18, pitcher, Ken Schrock. Number 26, infielder, Brooke Jacoby. From the Detroit Tigers, number 21, pitcher, Willie Hernandez. From the Kansas City Royals, selected to his 11th consecutive All-Star game, but unable to perform due to injury, number five infielder, George Brett. Number 20, infielder Frank White. And the Milwaukee Brewers, number 49, pitcher Teddy Fugera. From the New York Yankees, number 19, pitcher Dave Ruggetti. Number 23, infielder Don Mattingly. From the Oakland Athletics, number 33, outfielder Jose Conseco. From the Seattle Mariners, number 17, infielder Jim Presley. From the Texas Rangers, number 49, pitcher Charlie Huff. From the Toronto Blue Jays, number one, infielder Tony Fernandez. Number 15, outfielder Lloyd Mosby. Number 29, outfielder Jesse Barfield. The manager from the 1985 world champion Kansas City Royals making his first appearance as an all-star manager, an all-star rookie 25 years ago, number 10, Dick Hauser. Now the starting lineup of the American League. Leading off and playing center field, he ranks among the league leaders in batting, home runs, and RBIs from the Minnesota Twins, number 34, Kirby Puckett. Batting second and playing left field. A 364 hitter in five previous All-Star game appearances from the New York Yankees, number 24, Ricky Henderson. Batting third and playing third base, the Majors' leading hitter with a 363 average from the Boston Red Sox, number 26, Wade Bob. Batting fourth and catching. He's belted over 200 Major League home runs in his 10 Major League seasons. From the Detroit Tigers, number 13, Lance right, Perry. Matty fifth and playing first base. The first rookie ever elected to the All-Star Game starting lineup. From the California Angels, number 21, Wally Joyner. Matty sixth and playing shortstop. He has not missed an inning of play in over four seasons. From the Baltimore Orioles, number eight, Hal Ripken. Matty seventh and playing right field. He has appeared in nine previous All-Star games and owns a 370 All-Star game average. 
from the New York Yankees, number 31, Dave Winfield. Batting eighth and playing second base. He's batting at even 500 in three previous All-Star Game appearances from the Detroit Tigers, number one, Lou Whitaker. Batting ninth and pitching. He'll be warming up in the bullpen to make his first All-Star appearance. He opened the season with a 14-0 mark from the Boston Red Sox, number 23, Roger Clemens. Next, the National League staff, coaches and non-starters. So the biggest hand for the American League and its figures from the Texas Rangers. Charlie Huff, who's well known to Houston fans, as many years with the Dodgers and now a favorite in this part of the state. Rangers having a good season and Huff, their sole representative on the all-star squad. Now the National League. The batting practice then from the Houston Astros, number 22, Kyle Lanier. Lawrence. The trainers from the Houston Astros, Dave Lavoisier. From the Los Angeles Dodgers, Bill Mueller. The coaches from the Los Angeles Dodgers, number two, Tom Lasorda. The New York Mets, number five, Davey Johnson. The players from the Chicago Cup, number seven, catcher, Jody Davis. From the Cincinnati Reds, number 31, pitcher John Franco. Number 39, outfielder Dave Parker. From the Houston Astros, number 17, outfielder Kevin Bass. Number 27, infielder Ben Davis. Number 33, pitcher Mike Scott. Number 45, pitcher Dave Smith. From the Los Angeles Dodgers, number three, infielder Steve Sachs. Number 34, pitcher Fernando Valenzuela. From the Montreal Expos, number seven, infielder Yubi Brooks. Number 30, outfielder Tim Rain. Number 41, pitcher Jeff Reardon. From the New York Mets, number 50, pitcher Sid Fernandez. From the Philadelphia Phillies, number 28, pitcher Shane Rawley. From the Pittsburgh Pirates, number 6, catcher Tony Pena. Number 29, pitcher Rick Roden. From the San Francisco Giants, number 30, outfielder Chile Davis. Number 35, infielder Chris Brown. Number 39, pitcher Mike Bruco. The manager from the 1985 National League champion St. Louis Cardinals. He's a three-time recipient of the Major League Manager of the Year Award, number 24, Whiting Herzog. Now the starting lineup for the National League. Leading off and playing left field, the National League's top hitter with a 341 average from the San Diego Padres, number 19, Tony Gwynn. Batting second and playing second base. The most valuable player in the National League in 1984 from the Chicago Cubs, number 23, Ryan Sandberg. Batting third and playing first base. He has won eight consecutive Gold Glove Awards from the New York Mets, number 17, Keith Hernandez. Batting fourth and catching. A nine-time All-Star and twice named the game's most valuable player. From the New York Mets, number eight, Gary Carter. Batting fifth and playing right field. The top vote getter in this year's All-Star balloting from the New York Mets, number 18, Darryl Strawberry. Batting sixth and playing third bit. He's making his 10th All-Star appearance and currently leads the league in RBIs with 66 from the Philadelphia Phillies, number 20, Mike Schmidt. Batting seventh and playing center field. 
a two-time National League Most Valuable Player and three-time home run champ from the Atlanta Braves, number three, Bill Murphy. Batting eighth and playing shortstop, the six-time All-Star and winner of six consecutive Gold Glove Awards. From the St. Louis Cardinals, number one, Ozzie Smith. Batting ninth and pitching, he's warming up in the bullpen. Last year's National League Cy Young winner from the New York Mets, number 16, Y. Gooden. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, two of baseball's all-time greats are with us tonight as the traditional honorary captains of the American and National League squads. For the American League, this Hall of Fame second baseman spent all 19 Major League seasons with the Detroit Tigers. He batted over 313 times and finished with a 320 average and 2,839 hits. Named to baseball's greatest living team in 1969, he batted 506 All-Star Game appearances, the mechanical man, Charlie Geringer. The honorary captain for the National League began his 23 major league career right here with the Houston Colt 45s. A career 279 hitter, he collected 2,716 career hits, including 100 as a pinch hitter, a six-time All-Star. He delivered the game-winning hit in the 1967 game, number 10 in his Colt 45 uniform, Rusty Starr. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please rise for the presentation of the colors in center field. Canada and the United States will be sung by actress and model, the talented Sherry Belafonte Harper. Oh, say the last star-spangled 
degrees and humid outside but as always a comfortable and very pleasant air conditioned 72 degrees in the Astrodome as we get set for the all-star game I'm thinking about buying some Michelin radials how come well Michelin's really last what do you base that on experience I got 60,000 miles from my last set 60 pretty good but your car's getting old. It's just not worth Michelin's anymore. You're right. But who's buying them for the car? Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. There are the starters, and we'll be back with the All-Star Game after this ABC News Brief and a word from your local station. This is 24 News Brief, brought to you by the Austin Aqua Festival. Good evening, I'm Dick Ellis. The White House tonight is threatening to use the veto to try to curb the nation's deficit. Budget Director James Miller says a sluggish economy, Pentagon spending, and lower-than-expected revenues are heading off efforts to make the deficit crisis better. And retail sales tonight are posting their weakest gain in three months. June sales rose only two-tenths of a percent over last year. Elsewhere tonight, South African Winnie Mandela is putting some of the blame for apartheid on President Reagan. Mandela and members of a regional summit of seven African nations have condemned the president for not imposing economic sanctions on the South African government. Now this. Skipper pins now on sale. That's News Brief. Join us for all the day's news, weather, and sports after the All-Star Game. Thirsty. It's just part of my job. But I have my own ideas about thirst quenches. USA. Live from the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. The 1986 Major League Baseball All-Star Game. For the 57th time, the American League taking on the National League. And will the domination continue? Al Michaels with Jim Palmer. Jim, for many seasons, you were in the American League All-Star Clubhouse. The American League has now dropped 13 of the last 14. Unbelievably to me, 21 out of 23 fluke or is there a reason for it well you look for a plausible reason and and uh, i've only been able to come up with one if you talk to both uh, of the teams they say we're equal until the game starts and then the american league constantly loses as you said 21 out of the last 23 times the elias sports service did a book called the the base the elias baseball analyst book and in that book i think it dis it discusses an age-old question in baseball does good pitching stop good hitting and it really doesn't as far as averages go. They did a, a, a statistical analysis of the 85 season, took the top 12 Amer National League pitchers against the 1985 National League All-Star team. And what they found is the batting averages are about the same, 258 versus 260. So the averages came down two points. But where the big difference lies, Al, is in home runs, doubles, and triples. In other words, translating into runs scored. And I think that's really the difference between the National League and the American League. The American League sits backs, they wait for the big innings, they got one in 1971, they won. They got one, a seven-run inning in 1983, they won. For them to win, they're going to have to be more aggressive. And in 1983, when they did win, the final was 13-3. to Fred Lynn hit a grand slam home run in that seven-run third inning off at Lee Hamaker. Well, that's Jim Palmer's summation. Tim McCarver, of course, spent most of his career in the National League. Fluke, or is there a reason in your estimation? Well, I think the big reason that the, NL, the National League has dominated... Uh, Really since 1962, as Al said, they've won 21 of 23. That was the year, not coincidentally, that Mari Will stole 104 bases. Then came Lou Brock. The National League, of course, kept that momentum going uh, in the All-Star game, and that's uh, they've been running wild. They do have a, a spirited group of guys. I will say this, that the, the Yankees, uh, if they can keep Ricky Henderson in the lineup for the full game and give him four or five at-bats, then uh, I think they have a better chance to win because Ricky Henderson is the one catalyst that the American League has, has not had. 
head and uh, giving him a chance to really break out and run. And Dick Hauser has put Henderson in the number two spot, and he'll bat behind Kirby Puckett of the Minnesota Twins. So it's Herzog in the National League, Hauser and the American League in the sold-out Astrodome. The game begins when we come back. The 1986 All-Star Game. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Chevrolet, who invites you to drive today, Chevy, live today, Chevy. By Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By the Breakfast of Champions, we eat what the big boys eat. And by Allstate, for home, auto, business, health, and life. You're in good hands with Allstate. Now, the taste of lemonade, crisp, clean, refreshing, is in the ultimate thirst quencher, Gatorade. Where Dave, at least he knows he's in the starting lineup. He's not so sure when he plays with the Yankees. The umpires, Bruce Fremming in his 16th season calls the balls and strikes. Steve Palermo of the American League at first. Paul Runge of the National at second. Rick Reed, American third. Eric Gregg, the National League, down the left field line. And Tim McClelland of the American League is down the line and right. And so here we go with Dwight Gooden facing Kirby Puckett of the Minnesota Twins. And the All-Star game is underway with a bouncer toward the middle for a base hit. So Puckett starts things with a single to center. And how quickly the ascendancy for players begins as Puckett bounces one through the middle. Those two first faced each other in 1982 in the Appalachian League. And Kirby Puckett, of course, a free swinger. The fastball down. Kirby has walked only 16 times this year. Unusual for a leadoff man. So you have an idea that ball actually hit the seam and bounced over the glove of Ozzie Smith. Otherwise, he has, he, he'll have a play on that ball. So Puckett at first base. And in just four years, Puckett facing Gooden in the Appalachian League, facing each other in the All-Star game as Ricky Henderson stands in. He goes after the first pitch. It's a bouncer down to Sandberg, and all they get is one. You're not going to double Henderson on the ground ball like that. But Puckett is forced out of second. So they go after Gooden's first two pitches, and it will bring up Boggs. And that's the big difference between Dwight Gooden in 1986 and 1985. Not striking out as many batters, not leading the National League in strikeouts. One of the other National League All-Star pitchers, Mike Scott, is. A lot of ground balls. He's got two. One would have been an out, as Tim said have it hit the uh, dirt and came up. Otherwise, you have two ground balls and two outs. That is the difference between White Good and last year and this year. Wade Boggs, who leads the majors in hitting, batting 363. Henderson almost got caught going the other way. Ricky has stolen 51 bases, and this isn't a bad combination to steal against. It's about the only negative thing you can say about Gooden and Carter. As a matter of fact, of 16 tries, Gary Carter has thrown out only three with Dwight Gooden pitching. Of course, the reason for that is that Dwight is 6'4", 6'5", elongated windup, takes a little bit longer. And they say, and you're talking about a guy right here, <laughs> Ricky Henderson in 1982 will score 130 bases. Once again, leading the American League in steals with 51. Ball one to Wade Box. Kind of an unusual, uh, I think, ploy by Dick Hauser, manager of the, of the American League, leading off with Kirby Puckett. A familiar role for him, but I think most experts would agree that Ricky Henderson, the best leadoff man in baseball. Hauser asked about that, basically felt they were interchangeable. They did did a lot of the same things and that Henderson was perhaps better suited for the number two spot and there is Dick Hauser whose team is having its problems this year and I don't have to tell you about the manager in the other dugout Whitey Herzog whose team is out of the race and who would have believed that at the all-star break certainly not the St. Louis players not after the year they had last year His spike's caught, and that's a balk, an automatic balk. And that's one of the few balks that you will actually see, because most are invisible. <laughs> well, that's something that's very embarrassing, but invariably happens. And then again, this is, a, I think, something that Tim alluded to as you take another look at it. He's aware that Henderson's over there, the quick move, and he catches his spike. Looks like he caught his right foot. 
and the wise decision because if he does throw the ball and it's an errant toss, you're talking about a runner at third base. Henderson now at second with one out, and here's the one-one pitch, and it's two and one. We've clocked Gooden at 96 miles per hour. As you see, Henderson of the Yankees take his lead at second. Boggs at the plate with Lance Parrish on deck. Breaking pitch. Those who don't watch Gooden think he's having a mediocre year. Tim, you see him pitch every day. How is he now compared to the way he was a year ago? Well, I think that's one of the problems. Everybody is comparing him to a year ago when he was 24 and 4 and a 1.53. Henderson goes and it's fouled away. So Ricky got a good jump, was on his way to third, but retraces his steps. And his expectations, not Ricky Henderson's, but Dwight Gooden's, I think everybody is, is viewing Dwight from his first two years. And after all, he's 10 and 4. Randy Neiman, who was sent down the other day, a pitcher on the Mets staff, said, I wish we, we could all struggle with a 10 and 4 record. falls into that everything is relative category. Keep in mind, too, he is still the youngest pitcher in the National League as Boggs fouls it away. Matter of fact, he was the youngest player until the Reds recalled Kurt Stillwell last week when David Concepcion went on the DL. Gooden also set a mark, you'll recall, two years ago by becoming the youngest all-star performer ever at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. All he did was strike out the side in the first inning. Two and two on Box, who not only hits but walks a lot. Wade's on base percentage is 468. Well, something he does so well hitting with two strikes last year 240 base hits, over 180 singles. 124 of those hits came with two strikes, so it's a comfortable position. Maybe not as comfortable with a guy with the velocity of a 97 mile per hour fastball Smith sneaking in behind Henderson as of last week anyway Boggs had not popped out this season he popped out only twice last season three and two the count that's a perfect illustration of why he is such a disciplined hitter normally hitters expand the strike zone I think a key to pitching for not only Dwight Gooden, but for years that I pitched, is try to get ahead of the hitters and have them expand the strike zone. Right there is a borderline pitch. Fogg says, uh-uh, you're going to have to throw me a strike. So with Henderson at second, the 3-2 pitch is lifted in the air to left field, and it's Gwynn fading into the corner, has room, makes the catch. Henderson tags, but he's not going anywhere. And there are two down. Gooden gets Boggs, and now he faces Lance Parrish. Parrish was one of those he struck out when he struck out the side of Candlestick in his first inning of work in 84. Pardon me, I let ball that Wade Boggs hit would have probably been a home run over the Green Monster in Boston at Fenway. Well, at least a double. Yeah. No cheapies in this park. The distances are honest, and the ball just does not carry very well here. Strike. On one. I'm talking to Davey Johnson, who is coaching third base today for the National League, talking about the manager of the Mets. I, I ask him, really, what is the difference between uh, Dwight Gooden? You pointed out the record, the expectation level. He said that he has just not been consistent within the strike zone. He throws strikes, but they're not, as we see a curveball just miss, they're not as quality type pitches as they were in 1985. And plus, you saw Wade Box lay off that high fastball. That's another thing. The National League hitters are not swinging at that pitch anymore. They're making him bring the ball down, and he's much more effective up than down. One ball, one strike. First inning with no score. Ricky Henderson, the runner at second. And Parrish pops it up. Ozzie Smith in front of second base. Makes the catch to retire the side. No runs, a leadoff single by Puckett after a half. The American League nothing and the National League coming up. In the minors, you must have called it all a thousand times. Then one day, you got the call. 
this is the rookie umpire. To you, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. Compliment for that gentleman. This bar's for you. Lean on me when you're not strong, and I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on for it won't be long till you're gonna need somebody. When you need a truck to lean on, nothing works like a Chevy truck. Pressure, getting hot. Difference is, you're not. Band Solid makes the difference, and the difference is the dryness. Its wide oval shape glides on super dry. Eyes on you, pressure's higher. Difference is, you stay drier. Band Solid fights odor. Fights wetness, keeps you drier than these leading solids. Under pressure, under stress, the difference is you feel fresh. Band solid, the difference is the dryness. Also available in Roll-On. Dave Winfield talks about the irony of starting tonight and not knowing if he'll start for the Yankees this coming Thursday. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, if I can play for this team, I could play for anybody. But, uh, what can I say? It's political. <laughs> it's political. They should just put me in the lineup and let me play. Uh, there are no excuses about an average. I'm not really making any excuses. My productivity is there. The hustle is there. The contributions on the field and in the locker room are a very important part of the team. And when the players even question uh, why am I not playing, I really don't want to get into it. I assume that I will be in the starting lineup and just there for the rest of the year. And for those of you who don't know, Winfield has not been starting recently against right-handers. He's involved in a long-distance feud with George Steinbrenner. Long-distance meaning uh, not face-to-face, -face, but through the media. As you look at the defensive alignment, and those were Winfield's remarks about the fact he's voted to the All-Star team, but doesn't know if he'll be in the lineup when the Yankees resume regular season play on Thursday. Not exactly a one-dimensional player. <laughs> even if you're not hitting for an average, he can certainly win a lot of games for you with his glove and even his base running. Not only is it ridiculous, it's amazing. <laughs> Tony Gwynn, who leads the National League in hitting at 341, and he's already won a batting title, takes high for a ball. Roger Clemens on the mound. Clemens who was born in Dayton, Ohio, grew up in this area, went to Springwoods High School. Hometown is Katy, Texas. And a man who somehow had to procure 50 tickets for friends and relatives. In there, the count one and one. At the press luncheon yesterday, Roger said that in Boston, they said, how you doing? And down here, they say, how y'all doing? And that's the big difference in pitching in the Astrodome. That and the dimensions. <laughs> yeah. There's a bigger difference. <laughs> Fenway hasn't bothered him. Very few parks have. He was 14 and 0. Then he lost to Toronto. Then he had his only real bad outing of the year last Monday night against Oakland. But he rebounded to beat the Angels Saturday. So he's working on a couple of days rest. And he throws a fastball by Gwynn. Two and two. Pretty good idea right there, Al. Is if you look at the dimensions here at the Astrodome, right there, Tony Gwynn, as you said, leading the league. The National League in hitting knows the fastball is coming, swings right through it. You don't see that very often. In the gap toward left center field, but moving over is Henderson to make the play as the ball hangs. One left fielder flies out to the other for the first out of the first inning. Gwynn is gone, and that brings Ryan Sandberg to the plate. Most of the National Leaguers, those in the starting lineup, have been in slumps of late. Sandberg hitting 272 so for Ryan not a spectacular year by any stretch of the imagination and a bad year of course for the Cubs and just about anybody else outside of the Mets in Montreal in the East but Ryan the MVP a couple of years back and the fans remember in there for a strike on one Clemens consistently in the mid 90s 96 and up to 97 thus far on the gun here's the 0-1 pitch fouled away. Sandberg in the month of July to illustrate the National League slump amongst the starters is hitting 184 
And the starting eight, minus Gooden through the month of July, is hitting just 239. Of course, his slump mirrors that of the Cubs. Even when they do hit their home runs, usually nobody's on. They've struggled both offensively and defensively, and especially with their pitching. A lot of injuries. Last year, all five Cubs starters were at one time or another on the DL. This year, more of the same. And Bruce Fremming brings him up as Ryan Sandberg takes cold strike three. So the first strikeout of the All-Star game. The for the yourselves. Club. Excuse me, Al. Rich Gedman talks about, and Lance Parrish receives this ball. Look where it is, right on the corner, 97 miles per hour. Tough to get the bat off your shoulder. Two down, base is empty with no score. And now Keith Hernandez of the Mets. It's his fourth All-Star game, but his first start. And it's been difficult for just about any other first baseman outside of Steve Garvey to start for the National League over the past decade. In there, 0-1. Keith, of course, all the way down from really hitting about a season high of 338. He's been in another prolonged slump. But again, another one of those more than one-dimensional, as we see the excellent curveball, can help you with a glove. He's won eight straight golden gloves down at first base. You've seen him play uh, just a little bit tired, not concentrating with a big lead the Mets have, Tim? Well, he has a slow bat, but as you said, he can help you with the glove. Rip foul into the seats back at third. Still 0-2. That's how the half inning started uh, with the talking head of Dave Winfield. And Dave Winfield also can help you with the, with the glove. The only thing is Winfield's hitting 70 points lower than Hernandez. The Yankees are trying to catch the Red Sox, and the Mets are comfortably 13 games ahead of the Expos. That's the reason Hernandez is playing and Winfield is playing sparingly the last two weeks. Fouled away again. Whitey Herzog, who can't believe what has happened to his team this season. And Whitey is the one manager who has lost an All-Star game for the National League in the last 14. Yep, he was there in 83 at Comiskey Park. As Hernandez is a chopper, Wally Joyner, the rookie from the Angels, flips the Clemens, and the National League is gone in order. So we played one in Houston with no score. At Harris 3M, you get more than great copies. You get Harris 3M people, so your job runs smoothly. Why try anyone else? Try me. Hey, me fellas. Look here. Seagulls. Boy, the wine cooler. Seagulls. Good hours on. They got the stuff to keep them going strong. Nothing halfway, nothing sweet. Slow burning fuel of good whole wheat. Hey, banana, join the team. Fueling up to go full steam. Wheaties, Wheaties, good whole wheat. Now go tell your mama what the big boys eat. together with ABC Tuesday just to show you graphically pitches clocked at 95 plus in the first inning Clemens airing it out 11 times 
and Gooden a total of eight. And when you talk about airing it out, there's no better place to do it than in an all-star game where you know you can't be on the mound for more than three innings. I think the big tendency, Al, and I started four and pitched in five, is that you have a tendency to over throw and it seems like Gooden he threw a little bit harder when he got a runner in scoring position turned it up he faces Wally Joyner here Wally Joyner the first rookie to ever be elected a starter in the all-star game by the fans and of course it's the first time that rookies have been included on the ballot so that obviously helped but he got off to a sensational start and he's the man who took Rod Carew's spot at first base for California and has become an instant sensation. Second in home runs with 20, second in RBIs behind Conseco in both departments. He has 72 RBIs. What a nice stroke he has. There is the man who figures to be in next for the National League, Fernando Valenzuela, starting to get loose with Gooden on the mound in the second inning. I look at Wally Joyner and I think of Freddie Lynn back in 1975. Nice, sweet stroke. Of course, Wally, they pitched him a little differently. He went down and hitting well over 300 to 313, went down to 277, has only hit one home run in the last 25 games. So at 19, almost a month ago. Popped up and Ozzie Smith goes out with Gwynn coming in. And it's the Wizard making the catch. So Joyner is gone. One away, and Cal Ripken comes up. Gives you an idea of Gooden's high fastballs. The last three batters for the American League have been retired on fly balls. All high fastballs. For the All-Star game, as you see, the DH rule not in use. All starters except pitchers must play three innings unless you're injured. And if the last catcher becomes injured, the removed catcher may re-enter as Ripken takes low for a ball, one and all. A model of consistency. Cal Ripken hitting 297. Consecutive game streaks still alive. 690 consecutive inning streaks still alive. In there in the count, one and one. As you look around the Astrodome, ironic in this game, you've got Dale Murphy in center for the National League who came out of the lineup so they would take some of the pressure of that consecutive game streak off. He missed a game last week in Philadelphia, but Ripken keeps on rolling. Chopper in the count one and two. You talk to Cal about the streak, Jim. Is it a big thing with him? Does he want to continue? Well, he just doesn't feel that, uh, a lot of people feel that, uh, that playing every inning of every ball game is counterproductive you get tired he said what's an inning off here and there uh, I would just rather play every inning and I don't really think it's hurt him uh, a lot of times you think you were a little bit tired this year early in the year I think a lot of people felt he played too many innings he's in July he's been up 47 times with 20 hits so at a time when you think you need a rest he's playing as well as you can play curled foul he sort of downplays it when he's interviewed about it, but I guess the longer it goes, the prouder you have to become. Well, he's quite an athlete. He, he was an all-state soccer player. He's a type of basketball player that can uh, two-hand jams over his head. I think most people look at him. He's, uh, and you take a look, he's almost 6'5", or maybe a little bit bigger than that, weighs about 225 pounds, and they said a guy that's that big can play shortstop, a position you have to be very mobile at, he's got to get tired. Yeah, he certainly can't tell from his performance that he's tired. Ozzie Smith's been a busy man. And Ozzie now has three putouts and one assist. Two down, base is empty, and now Dave Winfield down at 232. That's the lowest average amongst any of the starters. 13 homers and 56 runs batted in. And for Winfield, this is All-Star game number 10. Six times in the American and four in the National while with San Diego. One and all. I think it was very interesting what he said about it's all political. Very proud man. Going back to 1984, they said he couldn't hit for an average. All he did was hit 340. It was after a year where he hit about 35 home runs and one of the toughest right-handed hitters park in baseball 
Of course, he was edged out on the last day of the season by Don Mattingly two years ago. Hey, they talk about the recession here in Houston, the oil and gas recession. Maybe Clemens and Gooden are the answers to that recession. <laughs> Turn they have the put heat. some gas on <laughs> in there tonight, I'll tell you. Well, we were up in Boston a week ago and standing around in the lobby of the hotel, and a man said, uh, I have six tickets. I need another six. All I had to do is pay an extra $200 a ticket to see Clemens pitch. So obviously there's not a recession in Boston, at least not for this fellow. No recession in the standings there either. No recession in the standings here as the Astros have surprised everyone by staying in the race. For the most part, they've been in first place for the first half of the season, though at the All-Star break they trailed the Giants by one. One-two to Winfield. Is hit into the right field corner, and it's a fair ball, and Strawberry gets it back in as Winfield pulls in at second with a double. Hit number two for the American League. One of the reasons that Dave Winfield can hit for a high average at Yankee Stadium is he does use the right side of the field. One of those guys that Kurt Flood used to talk about, spray hitter with power. <laughs> he is that. He sprays them over the yeah, that's right. Well, you talked about the high fastball that's good and been throwing, and there is really not too many better high fastball hitters than Dave Winfield, especially fastball. Just throw it up there straight, and he's going to have a home run swing, and that was one of them. If ever there's a chance to pitch around somebody, this is it. All-star game, number eight hitter in first base open. Chopper foul, and the count 0-1. That's an intelligent move right there by Lou Whitaker. He knows with Roger Clemens on deck that he might see a breaking ball, no doubt. And you saw an excellent curveball from Gooden. He's looking for that pitch. Now the problem is that Gooden's curveball is as good as his fastball. Whitfield at second with two down, and the 0-1 to Whitaker is a fastball foul back. 0-2 on the Tigers' second baseman, who's making his third All-Star start in a row. Hit 21 homers last year, and you might recall in Minnesota last year, he forgot to bring his uniform, left it in the trunk of his car. They had to buy one at a souvenir stand, and with a marking pencil, mark in his number, number one. As Whitaker hits it high in the air to deep right field, and Strawberry looks up. Gets a curveball up in the strike zone. 0 and 2. You want to get it down. Fell high. Second time he's seen that pitch, and he gets all of it. And you have to do that here in the Astrodome. No cheapies, as we talked about earlier. So a two out, a double by Winfield, a homer by Whitaker, and now Clemens chops it foul. And so much for pitching around Lou Whitaker as you look at his wife and kids. daughter said I'm glad I guess so <laughs> yeah <laughs> so is Dick Hauser and the whole American League bench all right receptive young daughter and you might think about why he didn't pitch around Lou Whitaker but one of the reasons is he got a quick strike on him and then you kind of can that theory about pitching around the guy once you get that quick strike on him and then he fouls the other one back he's 0-2 in the hole so you say I'm going right after him Curveball up just a little and tries an all-star. He gets Clemens, but a little late. After the homer by Whitaker, the American League leads 2 nothing. Outrageousness. Outrageousness. It's nothing more than a way to wake people up. Especially yourself. Wasn't that fun?
to America's best as they look to Australia and the America's Cup Challenge. Just because you've washed your car doesn't mean you're finished. After each wash, you need some armor all. On the dash, the bumper, and especially the tires. After all, when you're in love, what's a few extra minutes? Armor all. It's the finishing touch every time you wash your car. Olympic gold medal ice dance greats Torval and Dean in a world premiere performance. Plus the Harlem Globetrotters on ABC's Wide World of Sports, Saturday. Mark the Bird Fidrich exploded onto the baseball scene and was named the American League starting pitcher in 1976, his rookie year. Today he builds swimming pools with a friend near his home in Northborough, Massachusetts. A reminder, Monday Night Baseball resuming this coming Monday. Two games for you, so check your local listings. The Mets go to Cincinnati to take on the resurging Reds. And the Giants, maybe the biggest surprise of all this year, against the Cardinals in St. Louis at 8 Eastern time next Monday. Lou Whitaker's home run has made it 2-0 American League as we go to the bottom of the second inning in the 57th All-Star Game. And Gary Carter, Darryl Strawberry, and Mike Schmidt to face Roger Clemens. Carter fouling it away. You've noticed that the National League has Hernandez, Carter, and Strawberry batting 3-4-5. It's the first time... Any All-Star team has had three men from the same team hit in those slots since 1960. As you can see it right there, Maris, Mantle, and Scourin of the Yankees. As Carter hits a fly ball to center field, and Kirby Puckett comes in to make the play. And then for emphasis back in 1960, Yogi Berra hit sixth. Saw Kirby Puckett right there. One of the most difficult things in the Astrodome is to sometimes follow a fly ball. Go back, first time they ever played here in 1965. We played the first day game. The Orioles came down here along the Yankees, and we won 12 to 9. Boo Powell played left field. We won the game because we hit more fly balls. Mickey Mantle hit the first home run that day, right? Well, the night before on Friday uh -huh. night, line drive into the center field seats or up the chute. <laughs> On the subject of home runs, Strawberry hit a shot yesterday that had to be seen to be believed in the home run hitting contest as part of the pre-All-Star workout. He fouls it away. He hit a speaker in deepest, darkest right center field. And if he does that during the game, it's in play. There it is. And as we pull back, that's how far that ball traveled. A monstrous shot. And he's only the second man to have done it in the Astrodome. The other was Mike Schmidt back in 74 in a game. And it wound up as a single. Good fastball. Clemens has retired the five men he's faced. That's his second strikeout. And speaking of Schmidt, he comes up next. Well, Clemens doesn't throw very many bad fastballs. You look where Lance Parrish is sitting. Look where the ball ends up. And that's one of the reasons for his success. 97 miles per hour. And more times than not, he hits the glove. And again, it was a fastball that was up in the strike zone. Both of these fine young pitchers, high ball pitchers. Unless, of course, they throw the breaking ball. That high gas, it's tough to catch up with it. And as we said, one of the reasons that Gooden has not been as successful this year, he's been getting the ball down. Clemens throwing it by Schmidt in the count on one. Schmidt hit two home runs in this park Sunday to lead the Phillies to a win over the Astros and then took the day off from the workout yesterday and played golf. Fly ball to center field deep, but there's a lot of room here. And that's Kirby 
Cody Puckett making the catch. So six up and six down for Clemens. Still 2-0 American League, end of two. Brought to you by exceptionally smooth Michelob. It could make tonight the best part of your day. Chevrolet introduces Black Magic, a new Cavalier, with super-tuned suspension, ground effects, multi-port fuel injection, and so much more. What it is, is a new Cavalier with the bloodlines of Corvette and Camaro. A new Cavalier C24, a quick little fox, raised by wolves. flight. The food was cold. We're two hours late. So now they lose my bag and all I have to wear is a claim check. My head is splitting. I've got a headache this big and it's screaming for Excedrin. Excedrin, the headache medicine. Regular strength pain relievers give you only this much medicine. But Excedrin gives you this much more. Nothing proven stronger without a prescription. I had a headache this big, but I took Excedrin and it's gone. Excedrin from Bristol Myers. Excedrin, the headache medicine. Stereo television. Once you hear how great it sounds on a Zenith, you'll think we invented it. We did. Zenith. Quality. If you'd like to treat yourself to a color TV small enough to go almost anywhere, scoop up one of Zenith's great little 9-inch delights. Chances are, we've got your favorite flavor. Zenith. Quality. Hey, mister, can I trade in this 7-Up for a Sprite? Gee, I don't know. Something the matter? Yeah, Sprite tastes better than 7-Up. Come on. Really, Sprite even beat 7-Up in a taste test. I always thought they were the same. No, Sprite's the one with lemon, and more people chose that great lemon taste. Here, try it. Kid, you just made a sale. Third inning, Kirby Puckett leaves things off for the American League. Then Ricky Henderson and Wade Boggs. The Americans on top, 2-0 as Puckett fouls it back. And the count on Kirby is 0-2. Puckett, in his first two big league seasons, had a total of four homers. None his first year, four his second, and already 16 midway this year. Well, they made a change, moved him up on the plate. You can see him on top of the plate. And... I, I think the pitchers have adjusted now because early in the year he was, as we look at two old timers, Vice President George Bush on your right and Rusty Staub. Staub is the honorary captain and one of the original Houston Colt 45s as he dons the replica of the uniform. And Don Drysdale is with us tonight. He'll be talking with the Vice President in the next half inning. Puckett fouling it away, one and two, with Henderson waiting on deck. And then Box to follow. And Fernando Valenzuela, who will follow good, loosens up in the bullpen. Puckett with a shot at a batting title this year. Box leads the league in hitting. Mattingly is second. And then Kirby third at 338. He came up as a, basically a contact hitter, just tried to hit it down on the turf in Minnesota. This year, Oliva did change him. And if you look at his build, you can see that he hit the ball a long way. Three and two the count. The thing about this all-star team, or this all-star game, it has a lot of players that are so well-rounded, good defensively, good offensively. Kirby Puckett, for instance. Take a look at Gooden. Kirby Puckett led the American League in assists two years ago, second last year. The shallow right field, and it's Strawberry putting it away. So Well-rounded on both ends. A lot of gold gloves. A lot of consecutive games played, as far as Ripken is concerned. A lot of strikeouts with that man right there. Update on the speed comparison. Gooden has now thrown 27 at 95 plus he's also thrown a lot more pitches than Clemens who's retired the six man he has faced Henderson who bounced into a force good curve for a strike and if you're not used to seeing good I guess that's easy to do you bend back 
and the pitch breaks over. I guess it's easy to do if you've seen them a hundred times. <laughs> well, again, I think I've, I've, from all the media, the big question, what's the difference between Dwight Gooden and Roger Clemens? And we've seen tonight they both throw with the same velocity, just right around 96, 97 miles per hour. I think over a course of a season, at least looking at Dwight Gooden last year and the year before, has the better of the curveballs. Tonight, you couldn't tell a difference. Both of them, uh, with the exception of the hanging curveball to Whitaker, both of them had an excellent curveball. Clemens, of course, has a slider and a changeup, even though Dwight throws a changeup. He's in a situation, again, what you said, expectations. If he throws a changeup and gets hurt with it, people are saying he's not using his best pitch. And swing, and Henderson commits himself. And that's that for Ricky. Here's the fastball tight to Henderson. And after two curveballs, that fastball looks like it was thrown about 200 miles an hour. That's why you get a check swing in that situation. Two down and Wade Boggs, who fly the left to deep left in the first inning. Justice is served in a way, and there is Tom Lasorda, the manager of the Dodgers, and one of Whitey Herzog's coaches looking on from the National League dugout. George Brett was voted the starter at third. And Brett, after a very slow start, has really picked it up. But George has a bad shoulder, so he can't play tonight. And Boggs, having a great season, rightfully gets a spot in the lineup and is inserted into the three-hole. Another example of one of those players that was a somewhat one-dimensional when he came up. He's learned how to run, moved up by running on his toes, become a much better defensive third baseman. Will eventually hit more home runs. A look at George Brett in uniform, though unable to play tonight. Strained rotator cuff. Box toward the middle. Sandberg knocks it down, recovers, throws, but doesn't get him. So Boggs gets aboard, Sandberg making a nice play to get there, but unable to hold on, and Boggs is safe with two down, and Parrish coming up. What an infielder tries to do when he backhands the ball whenever he has to go to his right. Tries to catch the ball in the webbing, and that ball hit the heel of the glove of Sandberg. He actually went too far, and that's why the ball just popped out and no chance to get Boggs. And they've given him an error. Pretty tough call. Undoubtedly, the score never played on AstroTurf. The ball, a lot of people say the ball picks up speed. I don't think it picks up speed. That's probably physically impossible. But what it doesn't do is slow down. A lot of times that second hop is just as, as, as fast as the first hop there. The first hop is got a lot of overspin on it. Parrish, it's a fly ball to Murphy. And that's that. So Sandberg's error means nothing. And at the end of two and a half, the American League two, the National League nothing. Exceptionally smooth Michelob. It could make tonight the best part of your day. When the big Q flows, America goes. Uh, you there, Mr. Bailey, that's selling the car? You buying? Depends. How's it run? Great. Always on Quaker State. That's good. Quaker State means performance. You could depend on quality. I've heard that. One-of-a-kind formula. Stable viscosity. Keeps flowing. Protecting. You sold me. The clerk? <laughs> and the oil. Quaker State. The big Q stands for quality. Always has. Always will.
from the captain of the Yale baseball team in 1948 to the vice president of the United States, George Bush. And Mr. Vice President, first of all, an honor to have you with us. And I know that this is extra special to you being down here in Texas for the All-Star Game. Well, it's a great treat, and I've only got one real blessing, and that is that I never had to go up against Drysdale. <laughs> Mr. Vice President, when we talked about uh, your baseball career before going on the air, a special thing happened to you by the Bambino, Babe Ruth. Well, Babe came up to Yale University in 1948, brought his papers. He was dying of cancer, and, of course, he was the key figure in baseball, and I'll never forget it. it it's just as alive an experience as it was yesterday, and uh, it made a great impact standing there shaking his hand and just the memories flooded back and I've thought about it a lot. What a what a great ball player and what a symbol he was for the whole country. Well, and you too, Mr. Vice President. Thank you so much for being with us. Delighted to be here, Don. Let's go right up to the booth in Al Michaels. All right, thank you, Don. As Dale Murphy starts things off for the National League in the bottom of the third. 2-0, the Americans on top as Murphy hits it to the hole. Backhanded by Ripken. Playing throws and gets him. Cal Ripken. Well, you know about his bat, but for those of you who don't watch him play a lot, even though it's a disputed call at first, take a look at his arm. Well, we talked earlier about his mobility. You get a chance to see it here. Playing up the middle makes this play a little more difficult. Now you get to see the arm. As good as anybody's in baseball when he needs it. And he needs it right here. Joiner with the tag. Clemens has now set down the 70s face, and Ozzie Smith of the Cardinals takes high ball one Going back to what we talked about earlier out they talk about Cal Ripken and they said you know how can you play shortstop when you're that big you can't have good range we saw the arm right there he said if you know how to play the hitters you can be a good shortstop Whitaker throws Smith out and Clemens is now one batter away from three perfect innings and Kevin Bass of the Houston Astros comes up to bat for good Year Kevin Bass is having. Last year, 16 home runs, 13 already. Made himself into a much better left handed hitter. He's a man who, in spring training, really didn't know exactly where he fit into the lineup. In a way, some regarded him as the fourth outfielder. Instead, he winds up as the fourth Astro on the All Star team and goes after the first pitch and hits it down to Whitaker and Roger Clemens in his hometown pitches three perfect innings and at the end of three it's the American League two and the National League nothing do you want to buy a phone it's cheaper than AT&T what you really need is cheap long distance and of course our business systems are cheaper than AT&T everyone's saying they're cheaper than AT&T but nobody's saying they're better all they can say is that they're cheaper to which we say, you get what you pay for. Whether it's telephones, information systems, long-distance services, or computers, AT&T is the right choice. For all those performance cars that want to keep performing even in wet, sloppy weather, Goodyear introduces the Eagle GT Plus 4, high performance and all-weather performance in one remarkable tire. The Eagle GT Plus 4. The performance won't be canceled by the weather. You either have Goodyear Eagles or you need them. What would you like? Well, I don't know. What do I feel like? Why don't I try something you've never had before? Is that a lime? No, it's a drink. Seagram's Golden Wine Cooler. It's wet, it's dry, it's new, and it's Seagram's. You sound like a commercial. You're buying it? The drink? Yeah. But not the lime. It's a start. New Seagram's Golden Wine Cooler. It's wet and it's dry. Well, here comes Fernando Valenzuela of the Los Angeles Dodgers. 11 and 6. A 301 earned run average. So Fernando on a pace to win 20 or close to that figure. In what's been a real rough year for the Dodgers, especially injury-wise. Meanwhile, three perfect innings. 
Jim Bunning, our colleague Don Drysdale, Spawn and Bunning again, and Jenny McLean. Steve Stone did it in 1980, and Roger Clemens joins that select list tonight. Nine up, nine down, and hats off to you, Roger, with a 2 nothing lead. Don Mattingly, meanwhile, comes up to pinch hit here in the fourth inning. He'll bat for Wally Joyner and then stay in the game. Joyner came up once and popped out in the second. So last year's American League MVP facing Valenzuela and taking a strike. Ripken do up next and then Winfield. And what you'll see from here on out, not only pitching changes, but a lot of other position changes and pinch hitters. And there's a great story about Don Mattingly who's not using his bat. He is using the bat of Mike Fishland, the utility infielder for the New York Yankees. Mike asked him, he said, I'll probably never get to an all-star game, but will you at least use my bat? So he's using Fishland's bat. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Teddy well, Higuera. Always hope. <laughs> right, I guess there is. Teddy Higuera, sorry, Mike, in the American League bullpen is Mattingly fouls it away. But Fishland's got a good enough sense of humor to yes. understand that. It's going to take a tremendous rash of injuries. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll tell you, what a front runner, though. He couldn't have picked a better guy to let him use his bat. He's already won a batting championship. He's already won an MVP award. 341 this year. As you see him fish after the low and away changeup. Excuse me, screwball. And that's a posture that many have taken against Fernando Valenzuela. Well, he's got so many pitches. You see the screwball right here. He's got a fastball he can spot. You can see Manningly out on his front foot. Something that's not easy to do if you're a pitcher. Try to induce him to take that bat a swing. We said he's hitting 341. Can hit with power. Two years ago, 140 over 140 RBIs. Quite a hitter and made him look bad. Fastball to Ripken taken for a strike. Fernando, six years in the big leagues and six times on the All-Star team. And never won 20 games, and that's the amazing thing. 11 and 6 on a team that's 40 and 48. Eight games under 500 that hasn't caught the ball very well, hasn't scored a whole lot of runs. As a matter of fact, if you take these two pitching staffs, and I believe I'm correct when I say this, there's only one guy that's won 20 games, and that's Dwight Gooden last season. 24 and 4. So as you said, there is a changing of the guard. Very much so, and very much typified by the pitchers, by the young players. Accentuated too by joiner selection as the first rookie. Two and one the count on Ripken. One of the reasons for Valenzuela's success also, he'll throw any pitch on any count. He's got several different kinds of screwballs. Curveball and a fastball away. Scoogey there and the count of two and two. And he'll also, as you saw with Mattingly, throw the screwball to the left-handed hitter. And that's what also makes him stand head and shoulders above most, most left-handers that throw screwballs. Most right. of them won't throw it, throw it to a left-hander. Mike Cuellar, for years, pitched with him with the Orioles, would not throw it. It just was not effective. It comes into the left-hander. But when you have a control that Fernando has, you can throw it almost any time. Anywhere to any hitter, and he does it. Three and two the count. One of the National League coaches is Davey Johnson, whose New York Mets are in very comfortable shape in the National League East, leading by 13 at the break. In there, strike three. Change speeds, turned it over enough. And so Fernando, and you saw the graphic, he struck out in succession Winfield Reggie Jackson and Brett in 84 has got Mattingly and Ripken here. Well, you can see, as you said, Tim said, the quality of the screwball. That's almost right in the middle of the plate, yet he's totally fooled. Don't know whether to look for the fastball or the curveball or the screwball. And you also saw two types of screwballs. The screwball on the outside corner on the 2-1 pitch, and then he struck him out with the screwball inside. Now Jesse Barfield of the Toronto Blue Jays bats for Winfield and takes a strike. Blue Jays have struggled, so Barfield hasn't gotten some of the acclaim that he deserves. 21 homers and 65 RBIs to go with his 296 mark. 
in what has to be considered the best overall outfield in baseball as you've got Barfield Lloyd Mosby who's also here and you could certainly make a case for the left fielder George Bell having been named to the team but there's just so much room one and two there's one area that I thought Jesse Barfield would excel a little bit more is in base stealing only three this year of course Mosby makes up for it an excellent base stealer and center fielder up in Toronto but you don't take extra bases. These guys can throw, they can get to the ball, and hit with power. And he has struck out the side. Fernando sets him down at the end of three and a half. Still 2 nothing America. The look. Eurosport. The wet shape. Eurosport. The available Eagle GTs on cast aluminum wheels. Eurosport. The feel. The optional multi-port fuel-injected V6. The sport suspension controlling the curves. The Celebrity Eurosport. The price? Now you can move into more car than you ever expected. And get 5.9 annual percentage rate GMAC financing. Length of finance contract is limited. Celebrity Eurosport. Give me a light! Ooh! Bug light! Great game! What up? If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. A uh, pitcher of light. Bye-bye. So if you want the list filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask hey, for guys. a light beer. Give me a light. Ask them to bring Whoa. out their best. Bud Light. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. All I want today is a little circle cake. Regular breast x-rays for women over 40 could save thousands of lives. We'll have a report on why most doctors are not giving them. Tomorrow on World News Tonight. The National League starter Dwight Gooden with us, and Dwight, the curveball up to Lou Whitaker, and that's all it took. That's all it took, and um, that's been my problem all year, just, you know, that one mistake pitch and been taken out of the game, and um, from the second half, I hope I can learn from that. What about pitching here in the Astrodome? Do you like it? Yeah, I love pitching here. It's a pitcher's ballpark, and night. They got a nice high mound, and it helps the curveball. The New York Mets going into the break, 13 ahead. What do you do to keep up the good things that are going to with you now? Well, these have been going great. I hope the three-day, you know, layoff ain't hurt nothing. But uh, we just got to stay um, good and you know, keep everybody healthy and um, take it a game at a time and keep playing when we played the first half. Roger Clemens was here just a moment ago, and you told me that you weren't too thrilled going against him. No, I, you know, it was my turn to hit. I didn't want to face him at all. Okay, a pitcher's thoughts, and right now let's go back up to Al Michaels. All right, thank you, Don. As Tony Gwynn leads off, and Teddy Higuera is on the pitch. Higuera from the Milwaukee Brewers, and it means right now you have two Mexican-born left-handers pitching in the All-Star game. Valenzuela and Higuera with a mark of 10 and 7. Gwynn fouling it away. One and one. Ernie Banks used to say, good day for two. And, of course, tonight, a good night for two. There are two Smiths in the game, two Hernandez, two Fernandez, and also two Valenzuelas. Fernando and Teddy Valenzuela Higuera. That was his idol growing up in Mexico, Fernando. Picked the right guy, didn't he? Teddy might be Fernando's idol one of these days. Higuera has pitched some gems already in his brief career. Well, that he has. He had five pitches last year, and Herm Surrett, pitching coach up in Milwaukee, Got him down to three, a little change up, he turns over. He throws a little bit harder than Fernando, and he has a kind of a slider curveball, which they call a slur, which you saw right there. Three and two. Meanwhile, Mattingly stays in the game at first base, and Barfield stays in the game in right field. Mattingly hitting fifth, and Barfield hitting seventh. Three and two the count. Nobody out. Bottom of the fourth, and a breaking pitch is over. Strike three. And so the National League has sent 10 men to the plate with nary a base runner. Something you don't see very often, a called third strike. We talked about Valenzuela throwing any pitch any time. Wynn fouled off about four or five fastballs, and then all of a sudden 
curveball on the inside part of the plate for Rosen. Ryan Sandberg struck out in the first inning. Clemens with three perfect innings had two strikeouts. He got Sandberg in the first, and he got Strawberry in the second. The scoring, Winfield a two-out right field double in the second, and then Whitaker a home run after Gooden had gotten ahead 0-2. One and one the count. This game really all the characteristics of the game played here in 1968. It wound up 1-0, the only 1-0 game in history, all-star history, as Sandberg hits a fly ball in the shallow left. And Ricky Henderson takes charge. Henderson used to playing center, but knows what it's like to play left because that's where he played as an A with Murphy in center for so many years. Won the gold glove back in 1981. And you know, he plays center field up in New York now for the Yankees, but I think his best position is left field. I've never seen anybody play it as well. Keith Hernandez at the plate. Well, I figured, as Tim said, to be a low-scoring game. It's a prototypical Astrodome game in a way, even though we've had the home run by Whitaker. Certainly from the American League pitching standpoint, a typical Astrodome encounter. And this will make four perfect innings as Puckett takes care of Hernandez. At the end of four quick ones, the Americans lead 2-0. America, how are you? Say, don't you know me? I'm your native son. Willie and Wrangler, a legend in jeans. I'll be gone 500 miles. Made in the USA. You know, I've played a lot of roles as an actor from a cop to a country singer. But in real life, I don't play roles. I do what works for me, whether it's my clothes or my credit card. And I don't carry my MasterCard for show. I carry it because it gives me all the possibilities and leaves the choosing to me. Possibilities and personal choice. That works for me. MasterCard. I choose it because I use it. MasterCard. Master the possibilities. Me. I'm, I'm looking I'm for... A tall, cold, frosty one, big foamy head, rich and creamy. Oh. Three A and W's. Root beer! A and W root beer. It's got that frosty mug taste. Call yourself a frosty one. A and W. No. Oh. Huh? No. Oh. What do you guys do for a living, huh? The American League starter, Roger Clemens. And Roger, of course, 15-2. and two. Everything going right for you right here at home, Kitty, Texas. It's another page in the, in the history of Roger Clemens this year. Well, it has been. It's been like a fantasy camp this year. And uh, the Red Sox are playing well. And uh, I'm pitching uh, uh, pretty good so far this season. Right now, uh, I'm just looking down the road, getting ready for a second half. But, uh, you know, this was a, a big day for me. And a lot of family was here to see it. So I'm very happy. And, of course, the Red Sox, as you mentioned, on top, uh, you've got to feel as though that you can be there to stay. You are for real this year. Well, I think we are. We've got a lot, lot of young guys, and uh, uh, we've got a few uh, uh, pitchers that need to come off the disabled list to help us out in the second half. But uh, hopefully we'll get rolling and uh, just keep on rolling. Roger, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go back upstairs to Al Michaels. All right, Don. Whitaker comes up, and it's Lou who's the difference in this one right now. Two out, Winfield at second, second inning. To deep right field and out of here. Into the seats for Whitaker, who has 12 during the regular season. And we mentioned three homers in his last five games last week. And the difference in tonight's encounter with the Americans on top, 2-0 in the fifth. Whitaker and then Teddy Higuera to come up next, the pitcher, followed by Kirby Puckett. Fernando Valenzuela who struck the sign out in the fourth inning. Deals 1-1, one, one, and it's 1-2. And, and Fernando's wife, Linda, amongst those here at the Dome tonight. <laughs> Fernando and Steve Sachs representing the Dodgers in the All-Star game. In there, strike three. And so Valenzuela, who struck out the side in 84, and it's worth noting again, he got Winfield, Jackson and Brett 
has now taken care of Mattingly, Ripken, Barfield, and Whitaker. I'll tell you, shades of Carl Hubble back in 1934. He struck out five in a row to lead off the game. Not too shabby of hitters that he got. Now it figures Higuero would break the string, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, right. 0-1. <laughs> I think he was hoping that Lou Whitaker got a hit so he could bunt. Well, one countryman faces the other. And he would tie Carl Hubble's mark here with another strike. All you have is Babe Ruth, and then you had Lou Gehrig, and then Jimmy Fox, and then Al Simmons and Joe Cronin. Of course, at the time, you think it was they thought it was that great a thing? Well, Higuera's made a little history, thanks to Valenzuela. So Fernando has struck out the five he's faced, and now Kirby Puckett comes up. Remember when he first came up in 80? He looked so overweight, and his mannerisms were so unusual, and everybody said he's a flash in the pan. And Valenzuela wouldn't have had a chance to start were it not for an injury to Jerry Royce, opening day. Rounder to Smith, and it breaks the string of strikeouts. The two perfect innings for Fernando. American League two, National League nothing. The 1986 All-Star Game brought to you by the new Seagram's Golden Wine Cooler. It's wet, it's dry, and it's Seagram. Light. Cold but chilly. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. Give me a light. <laughs> Bud Light. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Look, give me a light. No, uh, Bud Light. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. and my grandpa brought me here back in 1986. Gave me this U.S. Liberty coin. Wow, that's a beauty too. Mighty precious, minted by the U.S. Treasury to celebrate her centennial. Is that why your grandpa got it? And so I could give it to you. United States Liberty Coins, singly or in sets at banks, savings and loans and Kmart stores. Keep Liberty in mint condition forever. This is a full-size Chevy. That's a full-sized Ford. That Ford's got a six, this Chevy is equipped with a V8. But did you know that Ford six is priced $147 more than this Chevy with a V8? So ask yourself, would you rather have the Ford or the Chevy? Simple, unless you don't care about money. Get 6.9 financing during Chevy's year-end clearance. Length of finance contract is limited. Welcome to the new world where all the rules have changed. A world of financial expertise to manage cash, build IRAs, finance mortgages, and a world of insurance protection for lives, health, and property. It's the world of the travelers, one of America's strongest diversified insurance and financial experts. Have you looked under the traveler's umbrella lately? The All-Star Game in Houston. Al Michaels with Jim Palmer, Tim McCarver, Don Drysdale. Four and a half innings gone. The American League leading 2-0. And Gary Carter to lead things off against Milwaukee's Teddy Higuera in the bottom of the fifth. Carter flied out his first trip and takes outside. 1-0. There's Fernando, who's faced six, retired all, and struck out five. Looking for a bat. Hopeful he'll get up. He's a good hitter. But chances are slim. They'll get to his spot. He hit three home runs one year. We talked about the dimensions of this park. It used to be the best pitching park in the National League. Now it's about the third best. They brought the fences in just about really 10 to 12 to 6 feet around, depending on which part of the park you go to. But also, I think another thing as a former pitcher is that, again, we you look at Fernando. Obviously, the pressure doesn't bother him, nor does the American League hitters. Look at Carter grounds it to third, where Boggs picks it up, and that's 13 up and 13 down for the National League. And it shades of 1980, when the game was played in L.A., 
of the first 14 National Leaguers went out in order, and then Ken Griffey hit a two-run homer, or hit a homer, off Tommy John, a bases empty homer, and the National League went on to win the game 4-2. to two. You just saw one of the differences in a third baseman playing on natural surface and artificial surface. You saw Boggs first step to his right, and then he adjusted back to his left. Ball gets on you in a hurry on the artificial surface, of course. One and oh, the count on Strawberry. Who rips it to right field, and Barfield has to play it on a hop. And so the National League finally gets a base runner. You throw Darrell Strawberry a breaking ball, you speed up his bat a little bit. You see the long arms, the extension, and then you see the top spin. Barfield's first step is really to his right, then in. Ball with a lot of top spin falls right below him. We said Jesse Barfield, excuse me, an oh, awfully good outfielder. That play can be made, he's usually going to make it. Mike Schmidt fly to center in the second inning. American League plays him straight away. And he lays off a high fastball, one and the count. Schmidt, of course, off a hot game on Sunday. He had two home runs in this ballpark for the Phillies. Playing at first base and saved the game with a diving stab toward a Houston rally. Pretty good idea of Teddy Aguera. That is not a lightweight. In 137 innings, he struck out 115 batters. Fastball over 90 miles per hour. Jim, we were talking about it between innings. He throws like Valenzuela. Maybe a little harder. He is very, very impressive. First time I've ever seen him pitch. And if you talk to the American League hitters, they say he paints. In other words, he's on the corners. Excellent control to go with really overpowering stuff. And a, really a thought that I was trying to get to earlier was that you take a look at the mound, part of a characteristic of a good pitching ballpark is the pitching mound. Very high mound here, good fall. You can get away with a lot more high fastballs on that kind of mound, and we've seen those all night. Three and one now on Smith. A very important thing, though, right here, Tim, is that, as we said earlier, you have a tendency to overthrow, and you're looking at a guy named Mike Schmidt who has 477 lifetime home runs. He's got Dale Murphy on deck. <laughs> The one thing about the All-Star game, you got somebody on deck just as potent as the guy with the stick in his hand. And Schmidt is on. So the National League with its first semblance of a rally as Strawberry goes to second. Schmidt is at first with one down. And here is Murphy having an off year for him. 273 average and 36 RBIs at the break. Coming off a shoulder injury to his right shoulder, and the story we heard, he was only going to play three innings, and I guess this is what you talked about, the spirit of the National League players. Once the game starts, you don't want to come out. And also, one of the reasons that he played in 740 consecutive games, he, by the way, told me on the plane down here to Houston from New York that Ted Simmons had a lot to do with his deciding not to play last Wednesday in Philadelphia. Set him down in the locker and he said, you're the one who has to make this decision. How long do you want to keep it up? Ted Simmons, of course, the veteran catcher who came to the Atlanta Braves from the Milwaukee Brewers this spring. High fly ball to center. And an easy play for Kirby Puckett. Strawberry's tagging but not going anywhere. And there are two down. So Darrell is still a second, and Mike Schmidt is at first, and with two away, Ozzie Smith is due up. But Whitey will look for the three-run homer, and he'll send UB Brooks of the Montreal Expos to the plate. And then Brooks will stay in the game at shortstop. An interesting thing about the three-run home run, Al, you have to go all the way back to 1964, Johnny Callison. Last time the National League ever hit a three-run home run, so they have one without the Earl Weaver three-run home run, so to speak. As we said, 21 out of the last 23 ball games, and here's a guy very capable of hitting a home run, even though he's coming off a thumb injury and has not hit a home run in a, in a long time. 
Well, UB Brooks went to Montreal in the Gary Carter deal, and neither team, I would imagine, would turn that one down. Carter has been a lot to the Mets, and they have no gripes when they look at the standings. And the Expos, among others, picking up UB Brooks, who has developed into one of the premier shortstops in baseball. Also in that trade, Floyd Yeomans, a fine young right-handed pitcher, Herm Winningham, and Mike Fitzgerald, and all are on the 24-man roster. And Brooks, all of a sudden, has developed into an adequate shortstop and a fine hitter and a guy with a lot of punch. Especially with two outs. He is one of the most notorious two-out RBI men in the National League. And that's the situation right here with two out and two on. The American League leading 2 nothing. And the big advantage, though, from pitching a lot of All-Star games is that if you can throw strikes, and Aguirre has done that most of the time with only the one walk to Schmidt, Yubi Brooks doesn't know how you throw. Chances are he has not seen him. I always felt the pitcher had an advantage. And I pitched against Aaron and Mays and Stargell and McCovey. And when I ran into problems is when I couldn't get the ball over the plate. Or <laughs> when I got behind. And I go back to 1977 where I served up three long ones at Yankee Stadium. One, two, and Brooks is a fastball high. Two, two. Valenzuela would be due up next, but wouldn't hit. And Glenn Davis of the Astros is out on deck if Brooks keeps the inning going. There's Glenn. Brooks hits it off the hands, down to second, and Whitaker throws to Mattingly to retire the side. So the Nationals' first rally is squelched. It's still 2-0 going to the sixth. I'm David Hartman. Tomorrow morning, highlights from tonight's All-Star Game in Houston. We'll meet Vanna White. She's wheeling in a fortune on TV's hottest game show. Sigourney Weaver from Aliens will be here, and Bette Midler tells us about her personal life and the baby she's expecting tomorrow on Good Morning America. The field of 24 has been narrowed down to the final five at the Austin Open Bowling Tournament. We will tell you who will be in tomorrow's championship round right after the All-Star Game. This is 24, KVUE-TV, Austin. The Golf Championships, the British Open, live on ABC Sports this weekend. A little reminiscing before we go to the sixth inning. Tim McCarver, you played in the All-Star Games in 66 and 67. How'd you do? Well, um, I did all right. I was on two winners. and uh, Both of those games were extra inning games, both won by the National League. As a matter of fact, in 67, the longest game, 15 innings ever in All-Star history. How did you do personally? Oh, I went three for three. I've got it right. Oh, three shucks. Three. You really had to pull that out of me, didn't you? And Palmer, your greatest thrill was what? Giving up what? those three home runs? No, I was actually <laughs> warming up to go in the game in 1971, being on a winning team and watching as I was warming up in the bullpen in Detroit, Reggie Jackson's home run off the transformer. Total silence in the ballpark as everybody else watched it, too. What a smash that was. Looked like a golf ball. As Ricky Henderson starts things in the sixth inning, Henderson has grounded out and struck out. He'll be followed by Boggs and Parrish and a couple of changes for the National League as it's fouled straight back. For the National League, the new third baseman is Chris Brown of the San Francisco Giants and the new right fielder, Dave Parker, of the Cincinnati Reds. 
Parker bats fifth and Brown bats sixth as Henderson takes a strike. You just wouldn't bite for that overly humble shot, would you? <laughs> Were they three solid hits? <laughs> does it matter? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. Really does. They are now. I'll tell you that. <laughs> two and two. The other change for the National League is that Brooks stays in the game. You now playing shortstop with Ozzy Smith out. Little looper, back of third. Brown is calling, but he's waved away by Brooks and is one away. So Henderson is now 0 for 3, and Wade Boggs will be coming to the plate. A reminder, ABC's Wide World of Sports. There are the times at the bottom of the screen Saturday featuring the World Ice Spectacular, including Torval and Dean making an appearance and the Harlem Globetrotters. And the week after, Mike Tyson back in action. The heavyweight takes on Marvis Frazier and Barry McGuigan in the rematch with Steve Cruz. Wade Boggs looks at a strike. Boggs has flied to left and reached on an error. It's softly in the center for a base hit. So Boggs is on, and it will bring up Parrish. I think I mentioned rematch of McGuigan and Cruz, which is news to those guys. What we'll have for you is the tape of their recent fight. Well, so predictable here. Boggs with a lifetime batting average over 325. He's 0 for 2. You know he's going to get a hit. Just fights it off. Good pitch by Valenzuela, but... Box won the war, just fisted it into center field. What was that amazing stat last year with the count 0-2? After that, Box hit 390 on the year. And lifetime, he's over 400 against right-handed pitching at home at Fenway Park. Box at first with one away, and Parrish at the plate. Little half swing, shallow fly ball, and it hangs for Murphy for the out two down and we'll see Mattingly one other thing worth mentioning about Boggs for those of you who don't really follow the game he's having a great year and he's doing it under extreme duress Wade is the fellow whose mother was tragically killed in an auto accident about a month ago so he was gone for a week and he's been able to come back and we talked to him in Boston last week and he says hey this is the best thing play baseball every day so he's a man carrying quite a burden magnificently Mattingly now, who pinch hit for Joyner and struck out in the fourth inning. Oh and one. Valenzuela in his final inning of work. And if he does not allow a run, that will make seven and two-thirds innings in his all-star career without allowing a run. One and one. The basic problem is uh, I pitched my first nine innings, didn't give up any runs, and then that's when the problem started. I got older, <laughs> and the lineups got better. One and two. John Mattingly, who I think in the New York Times a couple of weeks ago was voted the number one player by his peers. Poll of, I think, about 419 players. Said what he wants to do is you take another look at a screwball way out in front again. Pitch he struck out on last time. Said he wants to improve every time, every year he plays the game of baseball. To Sandberg. And the inning is over. And at the end of five and a half of the Astrodome on Whitaker's Homer, it's 2-0 American League. IBM presents You Make the Call. A batter hits a sinking line drive that bounces directly off a fielder's leg. The ball then goes straight up in the air before coming down in the fielder's glove. Is the batter out? You make the call. Computers? Who's got time to figure out how to use them? That's how the owners of a clothing store, father and son, felt about personal computers until they got one. And the catering business until they got one. We're IBM, and we've seen some very skeptical people become very enthusiastic. And that makes us proud, because we have more computers helping more small businesses than anybody. IBM Personal Computers. Small business is getting big on them. 
A batter is considered out if a ball is caught before it touches the ground, even if it hits off a fielder's body first. So if you said the batter was out, then you made the right call. Fancy restaurant, candlelight. Is this business or pleasure? Which do you prefer? Stick to business. People are watching. Of course they are. This is a commercial to prove this is the perfect time for Seagram's Golden Wine Cooler. It's wet and it's dry. And it's Seagram's. I heard. What happens after the commercial? Pleasure. What do you have in mind? You get to drink it. Use Seagram's Golden Wine Cooler. It's wet and it's dry. Bob Feller, now 67 years old, the longtime ace of the Cleveland Indians, and still pitching. He tours the country for charity, visiting minor league ballparks like this one in Peoria, Illinois. And for a donation, you can take your cuts against the Hall of Famer. Coming up this weekend, the British Open. Saturday, third round action beginning at noon Eastern and then Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. Final round from Turnbury, the British Open this weekend on ABC. Tim Raines of the Montreal Expos will pinch hit for Fernando Valenzuela, who worked three innings, allowed no runs, one hit, and struck out five, and those were in succession to tie an all-star game record. And now Tim Raines having a great season at 333 41 steals and he's been caught only four times and really on the verge now of emerging as a true superstar a guy who's been around long enough and he's just about been consistent enough and finally beginning to get his due as it's fouled away the most amazing tribute plays in Montreal doesn't have the exposure a lot of American teams yet over 900,000 votes in the All-Star, so the fans are aware of him. As you said, a switch hitter. Hit 320 last season. Amazing base dealer for not only you know, amount of bases, but percentage, which is the most important thing. The straightaway center field. And Kirby Puckett is right there, tapping his glove. One away. It's five putouts for the twin center fielder as Reigns is gone. And Tony Gwynn of the Padres, who's 0 for 2, comes up. One change for the American League. Lloyd Mosby is in the game now. Mosby of the Blue Jays in left field as Ricky Henderson is finished for the night. Gwynn fouls it away. 0 and 1. Teddy Higuera of Milwaukee in relief of Roger Clemens, who was perfect. If you join us late, the only scoring in the second inning. Dave Winfield with two out, double to right. Off Dwight Gooden, and then Lou Whitaker with first base open, the number eight hitter. Hit one into the seats in right field, and that's been it. Two-nothing American League. Interesting thought earlier, George Brett, you talked about the fact that he was voted to the team, but because of the rotator cuff injury, is not playing. He, when asked to explain why the National League always wins, or at least 21 out of 23 times, as Gwynn grounds to Mattingly for the out, he's just talked basically that every time the National League has been given a chance to win the ball game, they've taken advantage of it. Tonight, not too many opportunities so far. I mean, they have been shut down. Roger Clemens and now Teddy Huguera. They have not had a lot of good pitches to hit. And this is not a bad lineup that Huguera and Clemens is facing. Obviously. Ryan Sandberg struck out fly to left. Of course, the guy they're going to be facing for the American League in the seventh is Charlie Huff, the knuckleballer. So they go from Clemens through Higuera to Huff. Three totally different pitchers. Sandberg fouls it away. We talked earlier about the fact that the National League All-Stars, as a starting unit anyway, in a pretty good collective slump in the month of July, and it's continued tonight. You're looking at a guy that could put you into a slump. He's done that to a lot of American League hitters. Again, Tim, I, and we really haven't gotten a radar reading, but... 
Clemens was around 97. I know on Milwaukee's radar gun, which is one of those slow guns, which is three to five miles per hour, a little bit slower than the normal Jugs gun. I know they don't like you to say that. He's right around 90 miles per hour, so he gets it up there in a hurry. One and two. And Charlie Huff, at the age of 38, his first All-Star appearance coming up. We are told, Jim, that Huguera is throwing the ball 91, 92 miles an hour. With that, too. <laughs> Sandberg gone, so is the National League. And at the end of six, it's still 2-0 Americans. Boy has got and what it takes The slow burning fuel of whole wheat flakes Nothing halfway, nothing sweet Just the staying power of good whole wheat Yeah, hey bananas, join the team Fueling up to go full steam Wheaties, Wheaties, good whole wheat Now go tell your mama what the big boys eat Men we're going to live off the land. It's going to be rough. Either you pitch in or shape up. When pitch you're far up. from home, you can't beat a Honda portable generator. You get 1,000 watts of power when you're nowhere near an electrical outlet. Commander Fred, can we come in? Uh, hold it, men! The Honda portable generators for camping, hunting, boating, even charging your car battery. I'll be right out. You know, it kind of makes you wonder. I mean, why does Coors develop their own special barley? Have their own fleet of refrigerated trucks? They even designed and built their own malt house. Well, there's a saying. When you want it done right, do it yourself. This <laughs> is right. Well, when you think of Carl Hubble, you'll think along the same lines with Fernando Valenzuela. Five strikeouts in a row, and Fernando, congratulations. Different names in that order, the last one being Teddy Higura, but it's still there. Yeah, I'm very happy for, for the record, you know, because uh, I know, everybody knows who is Carl Hubble, a uh, gay star, and I'm very happy for Tyler's record. And, of course, you've got the bat right here. You couldn't convince Whitey Herzog that you wanted to hit. Uh, no, uh, you know, I, but... I think uh, we have a lot of real hitters, you know, and it's because uh, pinch for me, I, I threw three innings. I think it's okay. Fernando, congratulations. Okay, thanks. All right, let's go back to Al Michaels. All right, Don, you got to love Fernando as you look at Mike Scott. Bat in hand. The other night he was a pinch hitter. Went from first to third on a nice base running play, but then tired himself out to the point where Oral Hershiser had to go in to run for him. Mike Scott, who leads the majors in strikeouts, starts the seventh inning with a fastball to Cal Ripken that's hit foul toward the bullpen, and Hernandez runs out of room. Now other changes for the National League. Here, Reigns stays in the game in left field, and Chili Davis is in center with Steve Sachs at second. And we'll give you the American League changes as well, or a look right now at the lineup. In case you're keeping score, it should look like that. And they'll replace Higuera because he's gone three. And Mosby has already replaced Henderson in left field. One and one the count on Ripken. Mike Scott, who's thrown that split-fingered fastball, and some will say something else as well on his route to success this season. What might that be, James? And we'll have to open up Mr. Palmer's mic. I think Scott probably cut you off. Well, that was a split-fingered fastball, which <laughs> is... And there you see the... What he calls it is a cut fastball. And what makes that pitch effective is the one he threw before. A little more pressure on the middle finger. Watch the ball sail away. Ripken doesn't see that pitch too often. Of course, when you're throwing the ball around 96 miles per hour, it's going to make it even more effective, but... 
going back to what you said early that about the San Francisco Giants, Roger Craig has been the advocate of that split-fingered fastball, and it's made all the difference in the world for Mike Scott. I wonder what his record would be if the Astros here in Houston had scored a lot of runs and supported him well. He's pitched brilliantly nearly every time out. Well, last year, 18-8. and eight. This year, similar record. 